technical issues we see coming for for the building out the DGB? Well, they're the they're the reasons why we're building the DGB. Um, yeah. The uh, uh, core issue uh, still is performance and scalability of blockchains. Um, I'm talking about permissionless open blockchains. Um, if you look at uh, all the smart contracts running on Ethereum, Ethereum's a great technology and the smart contract approach on it was a great idea. Um, as you know, it has scalability problems and whenever it uh, runs into high use, the uh, gas cost goes through the roof because it's a limited resource. Um, obviously, uh, they're working on uh, sharding technology themselves there's many others out there. Of course, there's other approaches with Solana trying to be just very, very fast um, at doing individual transactions, but that doesn't really, you're still serialized on any smart contracts that run. Um, and there's a variety of other ones out there. We've looked, I haven't, uh, we're, uh, we've looked at uh, quite a few of them, although you know, in the last year, I'm sure somebody else has come up with something. Um, whenever you go to a permissioned blockchain like Hyperledger, then your performance is is no longer nearly an issue because you can do all sorts of interesting things, but you lose the open miner node validator capability. You lose, which is one of the values of the trust point of a, of the trustless you know uh, blockchains. So our approach on the data grid blockchain is to work out a sharding technology that can scale. Um, there's a lot of pieces to it uh, to pull that off. And in doing that, um, we ran into the problem that actually Vitalik and um, even uh, Vlad and others are struggling with Ethereum, which is that the current smart contract concept as it's implemented is not shardable. You can put a smart contract on a shard, but you can't put a smart contract on multiple shards, so to speak, simultaneously. So we've addressed that issue. That's the point of the X-BOM itself, the X-BOM, and it's specifically to um, allow you to uh, have um, uh, your exchanges, as we were just saying before, directly between accounts, not between an account in a smart contract. So um, uh, um, it allows you to uh, distribute the transactions to multiple shards um, based on uh, the, where the state of the accounts are. Then the, uh, um, uh, in our account state, think of our account state the same way you would think of a smart contract as state. Um, uh, current accounts, you normally just have the uh, 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 coin, the cryptocurrency volume and the account address. Um, what we do instead is give that full state. Um, so everybody's account has a state to it and that can be a large amount of data. Um, what we do instead is enable moving the state of accounts among the shards. And to do that, you need shard to shard communication that is um, essentially uh, 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 direct rather than um, across, rather than blockchain to blockchain, it's direct so that the state moves uh, between the shards essentially independent of the uh, blockchain itself because it's not relevant it's not relevant to the blockchain where the state information is. It's relevant where the, that the blocks are all valid and non-compromised. So I mean, just it's a little more detailed after that uh, you know. But um, the whole idea is to make a scalable chain. When I mean scalable, I mean massively scalable. Actually, let me define that better. There's very specific uh, term we mean by scale. Um, and we have, a, you know, we have the first proof that the uh, blockchain object model definitely works. It's absolutely running on a hyperledger fabric right now. Um, it is a prototype of it, um, and it would not be. It's it's a proof of concept in a prototype. It is viable and runnable. It's a minimum viable product. But uh, when we go to an open chain, um, it's, it would probably, the implementation would probably be redone. 
the, the key thing about scalability though, when we say the word scale, it means a very important thing. It means that as you add more resources, more nodes, more miners, validators, any word you want to use for them, that you increase the overall throughput of the entire blockchain um, without reducing the security of the blockchain. Um, you can also increase the security if you'd like, but at least keeping the security this uh, amount the same. So when I mean like that, I mean that uh, you know if Bitcoin has thousands and thousands of miners running on it, it's fairly secure and you have a very high level of difficulty for the proof of work. What we do when we shard, yeah. if you shard a proof of work type chain, you reduce the security of each shard to just the nodes that are mining on that shard. You don't want to do that. <laughs> so um, what we do instead is come up with a way that allows you to take advantage of all the miners on all the shards with respect to the security of the total of all the shards. And uh, to do that, you have to share hashes among the shards. Um, and then there's an issue of partitioning and management, all those types of things. Um, what that does though, is it allows you to add more and more miners. And as you're doing it, you can therefore increase the number of shards. And so with the increase of the number of shards, you have more opportunity to do more parallel blocks simultaneously, which in turn means yeah. you can increase your overall throughput. So you have a scalable system that will, that will continue to grow. Um, I, I would say, as, as I always say, the caveat on this, that all sounds great and I can show you the math and the math's very straightforward and it's actually correct. Um, and it, I'm building off of well-known documentation. I'm not, I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't really invent anything when it comes to protocols um, or algorithms. Uh, the problem though is that um, you're limited by the total bandwidth. So it will scale up to the maximum available bandwidth. So this is not something that you run uh, you know, over your uh, cable modem from your home, this is definitely cloud-based. You want to be running, you know, ter terabyte uh, uh, networks would be really great for this. So all of this, just by the way, everything that Dave just mentioned is actually under uh, uh, patent pending uh, uh, and uh, filed or being filed with uh, the PCT, the patent treaty uh, or patent uh, cooperation treaty as well for all international and those patents all will be um, basically granted to the world through the foundation once we have the D the data grid blockchain built and the dgt launched we do want to build the community and that's the only reason that we're protecting all of the technology instead of just open sourcing it immediately it will be open source but it'll be under a restricted source license you just can't build anything on here and take it somewhere else and you can't fork it. Um, so uh, actually a couple things uh, real quick, Jason, the uh, PCTs uh, for two utility patents have been sent back to me, you know, so they're, what that means is that they'll be reviewed by the PCT committee. In addition to the U S patent committee, the uh, patents were filed, uh, I'm going to say, do you do it September last year, Mike? When did, when did I file the Yeah, two? yeah, on the 4th and the 14th are the two dates, on the, on the XBOM and the distributed uh, POW. Right. And then after going back and forth for several months of corrections, they are actually, you know, under the regular review and will be reviewed in the next 18 months. So they're, they're, they're full utility patents, um, you know, with claims and all that. Um, then the... Uh, 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 I can't remember the other comment I was going to make. Oh, well. uh, on the provisionals. Oh yeah, well we, we're going to. There's a uh, four more provisional patents that are outstanding that uh, we have not. Uh, what's called perfected to utility patents yet. We will do so on those. Um, oh, and I remember the other one. Um, as of um, actually tonight, um, I will have very shortly a uh, setup script so that um, developers can start trying out uh, writing their own classes and running um, them on the class manager, on the XBOM, on uh, the sample network for Hyperledger Fabric, uh, kind of following the videos that I've put up. Um, that script, um, I'm just in the middle of writing it, so you know, you, a boot script that pulls down the uh, binaries and the Docker images and that type of stuff. Just takes a little while to get it to, you know, little annoying things to 
get, get, get the thing to actually pull down right. As soon as they do, though, we should be able to make that available for um, people to try out.